every single recession in the United States uh, since the Depression had had one thing ahead of that, and that was an inverted yield curve. Now, having an inverted yield curve does not guarantee a recession, but every recession that's ever occurred always had an inverted yield curve ahead of time. So it's it's a serious warning sign, uh, and I I've, I've got to say. And I hate saying this because when you hear this time it, it's different or this time it might be different. This time it might be different just from the standpoint of this is not a cyclical move. This is a secular move. This is the end of an empire. So, you know, will we'll think will uh, classical relationships continue? It's hard to say whether, uh, you know, what has always been throughout history when there was not possibility, probability, or mathematical certainty that the financial system will end because it can't continue. Halter begins by recounting Germany's request in 2013 to 2014 to repatriate 300 tons of gold from the United States. Despite the relatively small amount, US government stated it would take three to four years to complete the transfer, citing logistical and security concerns. Halter, however, conducted his research and concluded that transporting 300 tons of gold would have required just four flights with 747 jumbo cargo planes, each capable of carrying approximately 95 tons. Despite this, the final shipment of gold to Germany was not completed until 2016 to 2017. More concerning, according to Halter, was that the gold Germany received did not match the original serial numbers of their reserves. This discrepancy suggests the possibility of gold being rehypothecated a practice where the same asset is pledged as collateral multiple times. Halter compares this to owning firearms with mismatched serial numbers, emphasizing the importance of ensuring the exact return of one's assets. Halter shares his own experience with segregated storage of gold. In the early 2000s, he purchased one tenth ounce gold coins from a major East Coast depository. Years later, when he decided to move the gold to Switzerland, he discovered that the coins shipped to him were from 2005, not the 2001 coins he originally purchased. This incident reinforced his belief that even segregated storage can be unreliable, with assets being rehypothecated without the owner's knowledge. Halter stresses the importance of conducting thorough research before choosing a vaulting company. He advises ensuring the company does not pool assets, as this practice increases the risk of not receiving the exact items deposited. He underscores the need for investors to have as few counterparties as possible in all aspects of their financial dealings to minimize risk. Halter then turns his attention to the brokerage and banking industries, questioning their business models. He illustrates the example of brokers charging minimal fees per trade yet maintaining luxurious lifestyles, suggesting that these firms generate significant revenue by lending out clients' assets. Similarly, he points out that banks operate on a fractional reserve basis, particularly after being allowed to go to zero reserves during the COVID-19 pandemic. This means banks can lend out far more than they hold, increasing systemic risk. The takeaway from these observations, according to Halter, is the necessity of self-reliance. He advises against relying on financial institutions that engage in practices like rehypothecation, urging individuals to take direct control of their assets whenever possible. Now we'll show you the best clips of the latest interview. But first hit the like button, smash the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you do not miss out our daily recaps. I did write uh, several articles back at that time. I think it was what, 2013 or 14 when Germany requested 300 that. tons of gold. And it was only 300 tons of gold. It was not a huge amount. And immediately the US came out and said, or they, they jointly came out and said, well, it's gonna take some time three or four years because we just can't ship that much gold that quickly. It's too dangerous, blah, blah, blah. Well, I actually researched it and I think the number, and this is off the top of my head now because it's been so long ago, I think it would have taken four 747 uh, jumbo cargo planes to move the 300 tons because I think the max capacity is like 95 tons or 97 tons on a on a uh and i i, I my numbers may be off but i think i came yeah. up with it would have taken four flights to do it and it took 
uh, I think until 2016 or 17 for the remainder for the final uh, gold to arrive to Germany. And the interesting thing is, it was not German gold. It, it did not bear the serial numbers that were delivered originally. Uh, and I guess, you know, people think, well, gold is gold is gold. And I think that's really not a good way to think because no, let's put it this way. Let's put, if you try to do that with firearms, go, try to do that with firearms or, and have the wrong serial number. <laughs> I say, try to do that right. with firearms. You know, oh, it's a gun, there's a right, gun, there's right. a gun, you know, <laughs> it's not, it's, it's absolutely well, not right. It, if you think about it from a personal standpoint, you go out and you buy some gold. And this happened to me. Um, I'm not going to say what company it was. I will say it was on the East Coast. A big depository on the East Coast. You could probably infer from that. I bought uh, a bunch of uh, 2001 uh, one tenth ounce coins back then. I mean, gold was what, 270 an ounce. So the premium was not. I, I was looking for small rather than premium, or rather than than the, the cheapest coin. So I bought 2001 coins. I held them uh, in storage for five, almost five full years. The second half of 2006, I was preparing to leave the country. Um, I retired the very beginning of November, and I wanted to ship that metal. Uh, to Switzerland. I wanted to get everything out of the United States at the time. Well, it turns out that the metal that was shipped were 2005 coins. They were not 2001 coins. And I was paying for segregated storage. So I'm thinking to myself, well, what happened to it? You could pretty much guess what happened to it. It got rehypothecated, just like everything else is rehypothecated 10 times over. So I asked for my metal before the music stopped and Germany asked for their metal before the music stopped. The point I'm trying to make is the music's going to stop and you're, you're not going to have it unless it is truly segregated and you need to, you need to, uh, do, do research. If you're going to vault your metal, do research. Uh, and I would say, make sure that you vault with with a company that does no pooling whatsoever that way you can be fairly safe in thinking that your metal is not being lent out yeah uh, i've got, I've got to and say one, I other thing, one, other thing, one, one other thing just as an example and i've used this example because we've been talking about the great taking now for you know two or three months what kind of business model could could work with with in the brokerage industry where they're charging you seven dollars and ninety five cents per trade, whether it's a thousand dollar trade, a hundred thousand dollar trade, or a hundred million dollar trade. What business pop business model could possibly work? How could you do enough trades at seven ninety five for these people to fly around in private jets, limousines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera? That's not how they make their money. The way they make their money is you deposit your stock and they turn around and lend it out and they earn the interest on it. That's the business model. So if you think that, first off, if you think that you deposit $10,000 into your bank and they squirrel it away in the vault in the back, you're wrong. As a matter of fact, uh, what was it when COVID started? I think the banks were allowed to go zero reserves. So they didn't have to have any reserves. So, I mean, that's two <laughs> industries right there. You've got brokers and you've got the banks where, you know, they're able to rehypothecate as much as they want. Halter challenges the long held belief that us treasury bonds are the ultimate risk free asset. He argues that the questioning of the US government's solvency, morals and judicial system is leading investors to reconsider the safety of treasuries. Alter posits that the only truly risk-free assets are gold and silver, which have intrinsic value and do not depend on the creditworthiness of any government or institution. He predicts that this shift in perception could either proceed or contribute to a financial crash. Alter believes that as more people recognize the risks associated with us treasuries, they will increasingly turn to gold and silver, which could destabilize the current financial system. 
Halter discusses the significance of the inverted yield curve, a historical predictor of recessions in the US. While not every inverted yield curve leads to a recession, every recession has been preceded by one. He cautions that the current economic situation may be different, describing it as a secular, rather than cyclical, event. Holter compares the potential fall of the S to other significant historical events, such as the Bolshevik Revolution and the fall of Rome, emphasizing that the collapse of the US would have unprecedented global implications. He points out that many central banks hold significant portions of their reserves in US dollars, meaning a collapse of the dollar would devastate their balance sheets. I think the easiest way to describe what you, you know, listed out is you want as few counterparties as possible in every aspect of your life. You don't want to, you want to rely on other people, Local. other counterparties as little mm. as possible. You want to be as self-sufficient as you possibly can. I think that's the, that's the big, you know, the summary yeah. of it. It's pretty obvious. And if it's not obvious, then you're not paying attention. I would, I would just, I would ask a question of uh, what happens, the, the thought process for, well, since World War II is that the risk-free asset on the planet Earth was U.S. Treasury bonds. And I think the questioning of the solvency, the questioning of uh or even the morals, I guess you could say, the, the judicial system, et cetera, et cetera, in the United States, the questioning of treasuries is going to lead people to ask that question, well, you know, why are, are treasuries really risk-free? And the more someone digs, the more they're going to find out the only risk-free asset on the planet is gold and silver. Um, as in your far, head, as, yeah. As far as... Wait, uh, so I think that's that's where this is headed. Now, whether whether we get there before or after the crash, I don't know. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if that contributed to the crash. People figuring out, hey, wait a minute, the U.S. is a deadbeat in 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 every facet, in every way. Yeah. Financially, militarily, morally, judicially, uh, you know, the U.S. is. Uh, not even a not even a shadow of its former self. I would just say, as a student of history, uh, every single recession in the United States uh, since the Depression had had one thing ahead of that, and that was an inverted yield curve. Now, having an inverted yield curve does not guarantee a recession, but every recession that's ever occurred always had an inverted yield curve ahead of time. So it's it's a serious warning sign. Uh, and, and I've, I've got to say, and I hate saying this because when you hear this time it, it's different or this time it might be different. This time it might be different just from the standpoint of this is not a cyclical move. This is a secular move. This is the end of an empire. So you know, will we'll think will uh, classical relationships continue? It's hard to say whether, uh, you know, what has always been throughout history when there was not, not the uh, possibility, probability or mathematical certainty that the financial system will end because it can't continue. Uh, this is a secular event. It's not a cyc cyclical event. Cyclical event happens every four years, five years, whatever, 10 years, yeah. a secular event. You're talking about things like the French revolution. You're talking about things yeah. like the Bolshevik Re Re revolution. Uh, you're talking about world war, you know, world war two, the fall of yeah. Rome. That was a secular event. The fall of the United States. Uh, that's a secular event, but it's the biggest secular event in all of history because it will affect more people, more land mass than anything ever before. And I mean, if the US goes down, how many central banks have 50, 60, 70, 95% of their reserves in dollars? So when the dollar finally gets smoked, how many other foreign central banks are completely smoked and have nothing but a, 
a black hole of worthless dollars on their balance sheet.